This episode is made possible by our sponsor, Omega Bright Wellness. I've taken their Omega-3 supplements for many years, and so has my wife, and that's why I invited them to sponsor my podcast. I'm proud to have them. You can find all of their products online at omegabrightwellness.com, and bright is intentionally misspelled B-R-I-T-E, omegabrightwellness.com. This episode is also sponsored by Landmark College, another institution that I have warm personal relationship with in Putney, Vermont. It's the college of choice for students who learn differently. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Hello and welcome to Distraction. This is Dr. Ned Hallowell, your host. So glad you're with us once again. Uh, today, 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 we have one of my favorite, I and I can say our favorite guests. I can't remember how many times she's been on the podcast, but more than twice. And um, she's a remarkable woman. She's one of these people who just gets it when it comes to ADHD. There are experts, and then there are people who get it. And she is, yes, an expert, but she also gets it. And that just means when you're with her, if you have ADHD, you feel understood. And for a lot of people, particularly adults, they, they almost never have that feeling of being understood without being marked down, without being judged negatively. They feel understood, uh, appreciated, uh, and uh, it's just being with her for many adults is in and of itself uh, pretty much all the therapy they need. In terms of credentials, she's got them all. She's a board-certified clinical nurse specialist. Uh, she works with cardiology patients at Barnes uh, Jewish Hospital in St. Louis. She also is an author. Uh, she wrote a wonderful book called The Fog Lifted, A Clinician's Victorious Journey with ADHD. I highly recommend it, The Fog Lifted. And she works with ADHD kids and their families, as well as adults. She consults to businesses, hospitals. Uh, you just can't slow her down. Of course, she has ADHD herself, as she's the first to tell you. And uh, she's just a, a tremendous gift to this world with her energy, her knowledge, her expertise, her empathy, and her undying devotion to all the people she serves, which is quite a few people. I can tell you, I've called her on a Sunday and she'll say to me, I can't talk long. I've got a, I've got another client coming in. So she, I don't think she ever stops working. And in addition, she's married to a wonderful man and has two of the best daughters you could ever find. So welcome Kristen Seymour, MSNRN, A-H-C-N, Ace hyphen B. <laughs> Thank you, Ned. Thank you for your kind introduction and kind words. I most appreciate appreciate it and your support um, over the years, and it's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's it's a treat for me and our audience to have you. Now, we are going to get into a topic that you proposed because you've been uh, seeing it a lot, and 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 one that we have not really covered on the on the podcast. Uh, so, uh, why don't you tell us about it? Okay, so what I've what I've been working with with countless of my adult patients in the past several months is the reality of the overnight shift for the ADHD employee to go from a, an office setting or work setting outside the home instantly to a home setting, which provides much distraction and is a big, huge challenge for many of my adult patients. Um, and the reason I believe that this, that this massive change in this debilitation for many of them is because there's no mental or physical mind shift. So you know how when you go to the gym from your house, you're in the moment to work out, or you go from your dorm or your apartment or your home to the office, you are in a work mode. Without that mind shift, many people are finding it very hard to be productive and productive and stay on task. So um, we've had to adapt their lives um, and implement strategies that have, they have found to be pretty effective and helpful in making this um, new environment successful and productive. 
So in, in order to help that mind shift, I even have some of my patients, once they get up, make their bed, brush their teeth and get dressed as if they are going to an office, I some of them even go drive around the block just mm-hmm. to kind of move their mind from the thought of, okay, I'm going from my home as a sanctuary and a place of rest to now I'm coming back to the house or apartment or whatever as an employee, Mm -hmm. as a Mm -hmm. producer. And so that's been really helpful. But keeping that routine and structure in place, same wake and and sleep time, um, maintaining their prescription medication as directed and prescribed is, is all key to being successful with this work at home environment. Um, <clears throat> creating a schedule, writing it down, keeping it visual. Um, things like that are really essential for these visual learning ADHDers. Yeah, ab- absolutely it is. So one suggestion is to do the, the mind shift. And, yes. and what's the second one? Oh, I have many. Um, (laughs) Waking up at the same time every day, even if your first meeting, Zoom call, conference call, whatever platform you're working from, isn't till maybe an hour after you typically wake, still get up at 6.30 or 7. Go for a walk, exercise, keep your body on that same routine. The biggest thing a lot of my patients are missing is they don't have a good understanding of writing down each platform of a meeting. So for instance, you have Google Meet, Adobe Connect, Zoom, um, just you know, Google Classroom. You have all these different ways people are communicating and a lot of people have different passwords, different usernames. So I tell them, log on 10 to 15 minutes and be sure you have the right meeting platform, the right time zone, and have everything charged and ready to go because a lot of my patients are missing simple things like that. It has nothing to do with their production or their, you know, their mm-hmm. productivity or their, or their content. It's just mm-hmm. being organized on time and on the right platform mm-hmm. uh, with a charged mm-hmm. device. And those are all things we can control. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. And what's next? Another thing that would be really helpful for them is to space their appointments if possible. If my employ, if my patients are able to um, schedule all appointments, whether they're a phone call, a virtual um, a video call, everything 30 minutes apart so that you mm-hmm. have that 30 minutes to recap to yourself, jot notes, stay on top of it, stay on time, stay organized so that at the end of the day, you're not playing catch up mm-hmm. um, in, on that same Note, you want to make sure that you answer your emails as they're coming through, but don't mm-hmm. get all tied up and hyper-focused on them if, if it's going to take more attention than a couple of minutes. Kind mm-hmm. of print that, put it to the side, and know you have to get to it later. Mm-hmm. But those are all things that have been real time suckers and get my patients down a rabbit hole of, you know, they get tied up in one email or they run late on a meeting. Use right. alarms, use technology, right. space your appointments. Over the past few months, I've spoken to my friend, the founder and creator of Omega Bright Wellness, Dr. Carol Locke, about the benefits of taking Omega Bright's Omega-3s, CBD, and other supplements. Here's a clip from one of those conversations. Now, there are many different, many different products, uh, brands of fish oil. Why is Omega Bright the best? What I can speak to with Omega Bright is is it's a very different formula than typically what you can get in the store or online, and it's Omega Bright is clinically proven. We have over ten studies in major academic centers showing Omega Bright improving mood, helping with bipolar, with depression, with ADHD, with anxiety, with inflammation. So it's a very proven. Uh, product for you to gain these benefits, and these benefits we know come from Omega Bright. You can't get that with a typical Omega-3, which has, say, 180 milligrams of EPA in it. That just isn't going to provide that benefit. Distraction listeners, you can save 20% on your first order at OmegaBrightWellness.com by using the promo code PODCAST2020. All right, let's get back to today's topic. What should they do about the lack of human contact? 
That's a good one. Um, the, one of the most important things they should do is if they're living alone to um, check in with another adult, whether it's a significant other, a neighbor, a family member, to every day check in with someone either on a walk, social distancing, have a Zoom call, just socializing with friends, but mask, get together. I think the social isolation is is really, really difficult. I think not having the camaraderie of a team in a work environment around you is difficult. But yes. as long as they, you check in with yourself, check in with one other person, and then always socializing you know with your spouse and stuff make sure you tell your spouse and your significant other roommate family that you what you need right now because what i mean what i need is different way than what you need maybe that right. friend needs to give them reassurance maybe it's their boss telling them they're doing okay the social isolation is really devastating to these people and they have to kind of think outside the box and how to see one another but there's lots of things that we can do that aren't in an office Maybe they miss their boss and they want someone to yell at them. So you could ask someone to yell at you. Right. Exactly. Just, exactly. Kidding, I have a Christine. man I'm, I'm working just with. I'm just I kidding. have a man I'm working with who he's in his mid twenties and is a very successful um, architect type of position. And he was really struggling with all of this, with the lack of structure and time and, you know, to-do lists mm -hmm. and things being mm -hmm. visual. And so we got his significant other on board. She was such a partner in it. We've utilized a white noise machine to drown out distractions of delivery trucks and barking animals and just typical things. And then we actually also contacted his, his supervisor and just said, you know, we're, we're, he's adjusting to this. These are the things we're implementing. And the boss was so empathetic and understanding. He didn't mm -hmm. have to go into this whole history of his diagnosis, but he just said, look, this is a whole new world, a particular for my distracted mind. You know, I was kidding when I say get someone to yell at you, but I do think uh, <laughs> a lot of people – miss having the cheerleading and, and that couldn't be yelling, you know, come on team, let's go, let's go. We're going to nail it today. We're going to go through the roof. And, and it's just not there. I mean, you know, there's, it, it's crickets, you know, and, and uh, uh, I think the, the sort of the encouragement to cheerleading that people often dismiss as uh, superficial is in fact profoundly important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're right on. And I think what your, your first point of, with it, crickets, when you said that a, an idle mind can be a devil's workshop and mm -hmm. these people that can be so prone to that default mode or the hyper focus yeah. or going down a dark place, this yeah. is a real serious time for them. And so, like you said, the camaraderie, the teamwork, the cheering them on is, is, is really essential. And, um, it can be, I think no one, as you say, Ned, no one should ever worry alone, whether it's worrying right. about their work, worrying about their family. Right. They need to tap into someone they trust. And if they don't have someone, there are a lot of resources. There's a lot of hotlines. There's a lot of support groups and people you can talk to. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing is utilizing um, those grocery delivery apps or food delivery uh -huh. apps um, to uh -huh. help maximize your time during the day. Mm -hmm. um, auto pay all your bills. Le you know, make sure you remind yourself on your calendar to take your have your medication refilled. A lot of those controlled substances, you know, people forget about them. And when you're at home, you just kind of assume things are going to be done. You got to remember to call and get your medication refilled. So there's a lot of things we can do to help them be organized and be focused. You know, you, you mentioned the food delivery services. Uh, on the other hand, I look forward to going out to the food store as sort of my outing. You know, oh, good, I get to go to the food store and, <laughs> and you know, push my cart, right. get a little exercise, you know, see some human right. faces behind masks, smile at them, you know, talk to the deli counter guy. I mean, it's my little trip to the park, you know, it's, you know, and I get my shopping done. And so, so I, I, I don't want a delivery service, but I can certainly understand people who do, you know, to right, you're absolutely right. right. It's a, it is a way to save time. And, you know, yeah. I have, I can't, I can't not add that no one needs to be alone. Get a dog, get a dog. I know this is a broken record because I, I squeeze it into every podcast, but, uh, I just, I just, it's no accident that God spelled backwards as dog. And, and, you know, particularly if you're alone, if you have a dog, believe me, you won't feel alone. 
Yeah, I, I loved when you said in a lecture at one of the conferences a couple of years ago, you said you had written more prescriptions for dogs or an, a pet yes. than you did for anything else. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I don't know how many people filled those prescriptions, but but I yeah, I, really, I think the dog I, having having someone to love unconditionally there is is great or take care of. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I just can't stress enough how how much this lack of a mind shift and getting them into that mind space of product or, you know, production for these patients has really, mm-hmm. you know, been, been a challenge. And I don't think many people are really talking about it. People are just really struggling with their jobs and there's been a lot of layoffs and furloughs right. and it's just a really tough time right now. And I love your quote, just never worry alone, be there, yeah. be there for each other. I, the only reason I go to my office, you know, I have an office, I live in Arlington, have an office in Sudbury. And the only reason I get up and drive the, you know, half hour drive to the office in Sudbury is just for that mind shift. I mean, you know, I walk, there's nobody there, you know, a couple of administrative assistants, but I don't see any patients live. It's all done by Zoom, which I could just as easily do from home. But I want the feeling of getting in my car, driving out there, coming in, unpacking my briefcase, setting up my laptop, getting a cup of coffee, sitting down, opening it up, starting the Zoom. You're so right. It's it is a it's a kind of a it's it's a kind of a ritual that that my mm-hmm. brain is my brain is accustomed to, and and exactly. if it doesn't get it, it, it's sort of saying, hey, "What the heck's going on here?" Exactly, and mm. that lack of a true shift happens when one physically moves from one environment to the other, like you said. And when that's Mm -hmm. out of our control, we have to create a natural shift. Why I said I have a couple of my patients driving around the block um, and then going back into their home as an employee because it's just so going to the hospital to do my job or coming to my office to see patients um, and Zooming them from here, just like you. It makes me feel like I'm in a different headspace. Don't you think it should be more than around the block? Maybe drive, you know, <laughs> a few miles. You know? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. But I, just, <laughs> but I think some, <laughs> depending how block, how big their block is. But um, right, it's just right. you know, it's just it, I would say, and then the exercise piece and, and movement. You know, the ADHD brain loves movement, and so right. you know, I will do one part of my role from Zoom in my office where I see ADHD patients. And then I do another part of my role from my home because we can't go to the hospital right now um, due to limiting COVID exposure mm-hmm. and not unnecessarily. So it's interesting. You have your different kind of head spaces for your different places. And I think people really need to play into that and really think about that because it's, it's a big deal. What I'm going to do now is engage in a conversation with a delightful young woman by the name of Katie LaBombard, a That's student me. at, at there you are, a student at Landmark College, our podcast sponsor and the college of choice for students who learn differently. Welcome to the podcast, Katie. Thank you so much. Love to be here. Well, the reason we want to talk to you and follow you along is uh, track uh, your progress at Landmark College. You're a, you're a senior, is that correct? Yes, correct. And you're graduating in the spring? Yep, so that's uh, one more semester after this one. So tell me what it's been like to be at Landmark. Well, I mean, as we all know, this semester in particular has been very different. But um, beforehand, it's a life-changing experience. High school is absolutely terrible. And I can't speak for everyone, but... Most of the people I've met here, we share a universal experience of having a terrible high school experience, whether it was from like segregation into the special ed classrooms or just not getting exactly what we need in terms of education or that social experience that helps us grow. So I came to Landmark, I think, very developmentally delayed, very awkward, very not ready for anything in the real world. And to come here and be able to not start over, but but have different supports that I wasn't used to, have people that understood what I was going through and it'd see me in uh, a, a, the same light and, and go through what others have gone through. That was so helpful, incredibly. Um, and now I feel like I, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Now with, you know, this whole pandemic going on and classes being different, everything being different, you know, it's... It's hard to learn, but 
as I said before, people here, we're, we're used to adapting. We're mm-hmm. used to not, not really, we're, we're used to needing to, to, to step it up and, and, and learn maybe more than other people would have to. So I think we do have a leg up there. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, you know, it's still difficult. And what are your hopes and dreams? What do you hope to be doing after you graduate from Landmark? Oh, man. Um, that's definitely a scary thought. I, my broad dream is to open a business. I'm an a entrepreneur. Um, I think that kind of career style fits good with, my, with how I work and learn, yeah. uh, especially with being my own boss. But um, that, that's really as much thought as I put toward like, my future, especially with the career. Yeah. Uh, within my recent years at Landmark, I've gotten really into activism, uh, mm-hmm. especially with the neurodiverse movement and with women's movement and women's rights. I've also really gotten into that. But, you know, we'll see where that takes me. Good, good for you. I mean, most entrepreneurs have ADHD, so you're yeah. in real, you're in really good company. And um, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Katie. Yeah, you too. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for doing this. And listeners, if you if you'd like to learn more about Landmark College, the college of choice for students who learn differently, go to lcdistraction.org. Okay, let's get back to today's show. How under the weather, so to speak, psychologically, do you think most people are because of this? I, I, I think, you know, I say none of us is getting enough of the other vitamin C, vitamin connect. We're all mm-hmm. suffering from a little bit of a vitamin connect deficiency. But mm-hmm. um, are you seeing it uh, really bothering a lot of your folks? Yes. I mean, I don't think I've ever honestly been as busy right now as I am because, and a lot of it is because my, my patients are struggling young and older, um, yeah. particularly this 19 to 30 year old, um, cohort of patients, whether they're single married, whether they're, you know, whatever their state, um, state is, they are struggling. Yeah. Um, it's hard enough to be, you know, to think differently and have our superpowers as ADHDers in a typical environment with just regular pressures, social media and, and everything else, right. you know, other pressures, but then to have this uh, social isolation and um, restrictions is just making people feel even further apart from each other. And right. it's, it's really affecting my folks in a big way. It's affecting the students with their assignments. It's affecting the interaction in class. Um, it's just, it's, it's actually set back significantly a few of my patients who I've made a lot of progress with because it's so unfamiliar and, and isolating and it makes yeah. them, they feel terrible. So we're really working hard to be outside and create new habits and find new sports and, you know, things like that. So being outdoors, weather permitting is another key strategy. Yes. I actually told a patient the other day, I said, well, get a raincoat and go walk in the rain. I mean, yeah, yeah. come on. It, it doesn't yeah. have to be sunshine and, you know, lollipops and rainbows every day. Just put on a raincoat, get an umbrella, and as long as it's not thundering and lightning, go take a walk. I mean, I've been biking. Every, You know, mm-hmm. I've got a little girl I'm working with who's 10 who's taken up golf <laughs> because wow. she gets to be outside and she can be a part. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 I walk in the rain. Uh, well, you know, the, my children's story. The only children's book I've ever written. The title of it is "A Walk in the Rain with a Brain." Right, and, uh, right. Uh, so being yeah, I, so can, getting outside, changing the environment, changing your work environment at home, connecting with your friends and family, making yeah. sure you stay compliant on a schedule and routine. People yeah. just expect it to happen, and the people who are on routine and get ample sleep every night mm-hmm. and eat and have like hard boiled eggs, something protein packed, things ready in the fridge to grab if you're in a hurry in the middle of the day to eat between meetings. Just start to prepare yourself. You know, those life hacks we always talk about. Have things That's ready it. so you're not flailing. And you're so good at those. You really, so have uh, half a dozen hard boiled eggs and some carrot sticks ready and a pickle or two. And uh, Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. We are, I mean, I always tell people, I'm like, grab some sunflower seeds, have about six hard boiled eggs, you know, ready in your yeah. fridge, have some bottles of water, you know, fill yeah. your big, you know, 
you have a cooler in the back of your car. So if you do go, Ned, like you to your office and, you know, work from a Zoom, you know, and you want to do yeah. errands on the way back, throw your produce in a cooler, leave a cooler yeah. in the back of your car, uh, you know, have your car always at a quarter tank full. Our people mm-hmm. always run out of gas That's so, or else great, they're coming to meet on fumes. Those are just some simple life hacks. You know, yeah, have your prescriptions yeah. post dated and put on the hold file in the pharmacy. If your state allows that, yeah, it's just yeah. all those kinds of things. Make your bed yeah. every day that you've done one yeah. thing right. You know? Yeah. 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 It's so, it's so true. It's um, yeah. Fill it, filling your tank. I, another suggestion I make is to have a joke book uh, nearby at all times. I think we. Oh, I love suffer, that. Yeah, I think these days we can suffer from excessive solemnity, and uh, if you have a joke, it's got to be jokes that you think are funny, you know, but uh, not just right. a joke book, but, <laughs> right. but a, a right. joke book that will reliably make you laugh because it it is true that laughter does dilute a lot of uh, a lot of negative feelings, and uh, it does. And just yeah. smile, like when you start your Zoom meetings smile at each other. I read the other day that a smile is the start to peace. I'm like, it really is. If we all just took a minute, everyone's in such a hurry and so angry all the time right now. It's really kind of a crazy, a crazy time. But the one thing we can do is be gentle with ourselves, plan Mm -hmm. ahead, be cognizant of a mind shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and be, just try to be gentle with yourself. Everyone's so hard on themselves right now too, but I'm your boss. Be kind. You know, there was a big survey, well, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, but uh, voting on what are the three most attractive qualities in a person, not physical attributes, but uh, you know, what are the three most attractive qualities? What do you think the top three were? Um, that aren't physical, a positive Not attitude. Physical. Well, kindness. That it was, number one was kindness. kindness. They called it kindness. Yeah. What were the other two? Number two was health, uh, to mm-hmm. be in good health. And number three was intelligence. Wow. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. And I, that's probably yeah. so true. But yeah. Um, yeah, being kind is, it's important, but I don't think enough people are right now. <laughs> No, no, really. It, it's a we've really got to do something about it. No, no matter who the president is, we. we really oh, I know. Need to. I was in line the other day, and this little elderly woman was behind me and had like one item, and I let her go ahead of me. Uh-huh. And the person two behind, even though we were all six feet apart, got yeah. mad at me. Oh, I was yeah. like, "What <laughs> is wrong with this scenario here?" <laughs> really, that's amazing. Got mad mm-hmm. at you for letting a little old lady with one item get in front of you. Yeah, I was just like, just, wow. So really, it really made me think, okay, we all need to kind of be a little gentler with ourselves, a little kinder, a little more, you know, forgiving. And yeah, yeah. Right, just get through each day right now, because this this is not an easy time for anyone. And it, no, it's especially- not at all. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, we're all a little frazzled. And, um, um, you know, I think, but these are great suggestions, Kristen, as always. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, know. you're welcome. I just think that that mind, the idea of the mind thing is really, it's kind of when you really think about it, it really can help people then framework how yeah. they can be most productive, how yeah. they can take this nuance, this new way we're living and try to make it work because your home yes. and your op, you know, your home should be your sanctuary. Yeah, but you can yes. make it. I don't care if you live in a studio apartment, you can find another little corner. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely. different and put a little plant there, figure it out. Like a little yeah. change up. I just, people can help you. I'm always here. Yeah. <laughs> you are. Now, if someone wants to reach you or go to your website, what's the best way to do it? Well, just going to my website is probably the best. And that's my okay. ADHD fog lifted webs.com website. And I have this. So wait, 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 let me say that the, the listeners don't know. So ADHD fog lifted dot com right so mm-hmm. adhd fog fog lifted l-i-f-t-e-d dot com and that's mm-hmm. uh Kristen's, uh website and you can reach mm-hmm. her through that and and then of course her book the fog lifted a clinician's victorious journey with adhd it's a wonderful book it's you know autobiographical but it's full of not but and it's full of uh wonderfully uh Useful and amusing and deep and moving uh, anecdotes and Thank ideas. You. It's uh, yeah. Thank you, Ned. And there's also my binder that's on there where I can that gives virtual learning tips for the 
elementary school student, the college student, the adult, um, that I think it's been real helpful for parents because it's it's a whole new um, – parents turned into teachers overnight. And yeah. um, and I think that this, that this provides some real good tools that are from different articles and different resources all at one at your fingertips in a few pages. So that's, that's on my site too if anyone needs help with that. Wonderful, wonderful. And I can tell you that if that binder – is like uh, have a, taking a special ed consultant home with you. It, it really is amazingly detailed, uh, not in a boring way, in an encyclopedic, encyclopedic useful way. It's a it's a yeah. wonderful, wonderful resource. That's right. You saw that, and I just added a tab for virtual, so you you know exactly. Yeah. So it's been it's yeah. it's, it's even more robust now. <laughs> Uh, Good word, robust. Well, uh, Kristen also wrote a robust blurb for my new book, which won't be out until (laughs) January, but I'm tickled to have her name on the back of my book. Oh, the new book, ADHD 2.0, is fabulous. I honestly, as an ADHDer who finds reading um, to be something I have to do and usually don't want to do, I wanted to finish that. I wanted to read it. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Well, it, I think you can order it in, in advance on Amazon now. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was, it was wonderful. Ex- it is excellent, and it's 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 informative. Um, it's a great navigator and guide. Um, it's got. It's just I loved it, and I think you and Doctor Reddy did a great job. I mean, it's wonderful. Thank so you. I hope everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I thought it. I thought it was great. I thought all your. I think all the books are great, but I think that one and Distraction are fabulous. I mean, this is like even well, better. Thank you so much. And yours, uh, you know, we're, we've got this mutual admiration society going here, but it's true. You really are. <laughs> you really are like the ADHD whisperer. I mean, you you just uh, wow. you you get it in the way that very few people do. And and uh, so anyone who Thank is you. lucky enough to have a consultation with you is comes away the better for it. Well, will you promise to come on my podcast again someday? Of course. You know, I love it. It's so fun. I always love Good. chatting with you. Good. We always share some Good. great information. Yeah. Well, it's been great having you. And thank, thank you, you for this so uh, this wonderful contribution today. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care, Kristen. You too, Ned. All right. Well, that's our show for today. To learn more about Kristen Seymour, go to ADHDfoglifted.com. You can watch the short videos she creates every week for parents of school-age kids with ADHD. And you can also get her... 100-page resource binder filled with strategies and tools for success with ADHD at home and at school. Kristen is also on Instagram with the username ADHD Fog Lifted. You can also find Distraction on Instagram too, as well as Facebook and Twitter. And you can find my 60-second uh, um, video clips on uh, ADHD on TikTok. And we now have over 3 million views on TikTok, so it's worth going to check it out. Uh, It's uh, at Dr. Hallowell on TikTok. Um, I've unloaded a bunch of videos there, and I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, Our email is connect at distractionpodcast.com. That's connect at distractionpodcast.com. Okay, as I said, that's it for today. Distraction is created by Sounds Great Media. Our producer is the wonderful Sarah Gurton, and our audio engineer and editor is the brilliant Scott Person. I'm Dr. Ned Hallowell, and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me and us. The episode you just heard was made possible by my good friends at Omega Bright Wellness. I take their supplements every day, and that's why I invited them to sponsor my podcast. Shop online at Omega Bright, and that's B-R-I-T-E, wellness.com.